Hello, everyone. Welcome to training for job placement providers to assist individuals with vision loss find employment. And I will mute you for this beginning part. And then for the second half, we will talk about some questions that you guys have and hopefully we can answer them for you. So first of all, I wanted to let you guys know that all of these have been recorded and the sessions can be found on our Department of Human Services website. And so in the slides, I provided that link and I can also send out that link at the end of our trainings. And um, if you want, if you didn't get a certificate for attendance for any of the sessions, for session one, there's a quiz, and for session two and three, there are code words, and I'm doing something a little bit different for session four to get your certificate of attendance. So the overview of today, I'm going to go over the handouts that I sent you guys yesterday, which caused a little mess up with it saying it was canceled, but I'm glad you guys are here. The first form I'm going to go over is a resource guide that I provided to you guys. I made it on one page and I wanted to start out with all the counselors district offices and their phone numbers. That way um, the counselors are the ones that, per that, that sent the client to you. So they are the first person that you want to go back to with questions. And then the second resource is the South Dakota Rehabilitation Center for the Blind. And there we do training for clients, but we also do training for staff. And so if there's any time that you guys are in Sioux Falls and you wanted to tour or even do a little bit of training, feel free to stop in and get a tour and get an idea of what goes on here and what our, what our clients go through. And that way you can have a little bit better understanding of vision loss. So some of the classes that individuals go through is assistive technology and that's where they learn about those enlargement programs that we talked about um, the speech to text programs or text to speech programs and then also she works a lot with apple products so the mac computer the ipad and the iphone another class is home management and that's where they cook and clean and do laundry and sew buttons on and do things around the house and and keep their independence. And then another class is communications where they learn about braille, talking clocks, talking calendars, writing guides, budgeting. Uh, another class is uh, I guess orientation and mobility and that's where they get from one place to another and we focused on that last session. And they learn how to use a white cane if that's their way of travel and also the bus routes. And then also here at the Rehabilitation Center for the Blind, we have a low vision clinic, and that's where they recommend the magnifiers and the solar shields and the different types of lighting that we also talked about. And then finally, we have a program called Vocational Resources, and that includes employment skills training and an employment specialist. And Vocational Resources is for people with all different disabilities, not just vision loss. So it's a little unique to the center. Another resource that is beneficial for our clients with vision loss is an assistive technology assessment. And the counselor does refer uh, the client to one of these if it's needed. And if you guys had any questions, I did put Dakota link down. They are our main person that we go to that we have a contract with. And so if there's any type of assistive technology that you want to learn more about or have a question about, feel free to give them a call. I also put their website down. We have a deaf blind specialist here at the Rehab Center for the Blind, and that is Lori Meegard. And I put her number down, which is the same as their center number. And then Rose Mooring, she is at the Center for Disabilities Deaf Blind Program. And then the Helen Keller National Center is also, of course, a deaf blind organization that does trainings and also training for clients and for staff and so I provided a handout they have a they have a training that's coming up that is for uh, people 
for vocational rehabilitation counselors and for placement specialists. And so it's a two part training. And in order to get the certificate of completion, you do have to attend both parts. The first part is online and the second part is on campus in New York. And it is a little spendy, but just wanted to provide that as a resource if you guys were interested. Uh, for diabetics, lots of clients that we see with vision loss are diabetics, and so connecting them with the diabetic specialist is important. Um, here in Sioux Falls, we have Hy-V, Avera Clinics. I don't think they are all the way throughout the, the state of South Dakota, but um, they have a diabetic specialist, usually at one of the locations. Uh, traumatic brain injury. We have a individual here at the Reup Center and her name is Mary Tomarason and she is a brain injury specialist and she does brain injury and stroke groups. And so if you have any questions about working with an individual with any form of brain injury, she is an excellent resource. The VA has a visual impairment service team and so I provided the Sioux Falls number because she was the one that I was most familiar with. But if you call Anna Perry, she can connect you with other ones throughout the state. And then the National Technical Assistance Center on Blindness and Visual, Visual Impairment has been providing a lot of resources out there for people with vision loss and helping them find employment. And they recently, as of last week, uh, release a human resource guide, which I connected as one of the attachments in the email yesterday. And that resource guide is specifically for working with employees experiencing vision loss. And so I thought it was an excellent resource guide. Uh, this is a picture of the very first page. And it goes over almost everything that we have discussed about uh, vision loss so far. And so I think that's something that you guys could reflect back on or when you're going to talk to an employer what a client that has a vision impairment, provide them with that handout. So it might be a good thing just to have with you at all times when working with a client that has vision loss. And then I provided two websites, the American Foundation for the Blind and the National Eye Institute. Those are good, valid resources on learning more about vision loss, and they do have some employment pieces in there as well as how to work with individuals with vision loss, find employment. And then the last few, like the Job Accommodations Network, JAN, and Department of Labor, and the Rocky Mountain ADA, those websites I'm sure you guys are already familiar with because you can use them for people with all different types of disabilities. I did want to mention the Rocky Mountain ADA Center will be presenting at the Rehab Action Fall Conference in October. So if you are able to make that, that would be great and hear them talk about different accommodations. So that's the resource guide and um, the handouts that I sent out. Another handout that I created uh, with the help of Lonnie Broughton. Oh, I took it out. Okay. So it, it is titled a Personal Disability and Employment Information Form. And Lonnie Broughton is an employment specialist, a private provider here in Sioux Falls. And when she meets with individuals for the first time, she fills out this form with them and has them sign it at the end. So at the end, it says, I, and then the client's name, hereby authorize uh, you as a provider, employment specialist, permission to discuss my disability, possible limitations, and employment history with prospective employers. This information is to be used with the context of our employment search. Should she determine it necessary, she may use any or all of this information to assist me with finding the goal to obtain and maintain employment. You as an employment specialist has my permission to discuss and offer state incentives on my behalf and then they sign it so that helps them be responsible and and then also that client knows what the 
employment specialist is going to be discussing. And so on this form, it kind of gathers all of the information, just like an intake form of the client and helps you get a better understanding right from the start, right when you meet them for the very first time. In the, the section for primary disability, uh, when you're working with a client with vision loss, that's going to be their primary disability. The first question I find easy to get to know them <clears throat> is asking them, what is it like looking through your eyes? And so with that, they are able to explain to you what type of vision loss they have. The diagnosis doesn't always matter. Uh, the diagnosis helps us as professionals know what's, what their eye condition is, but having them explain what it's like looking through their eyes will help you understand what it is like looking in, out of their shoes or being in their shoes. And then also knowing about the other disabilities is important as well. And then also knowing their limitations, you know, how they read print. So that would be you know, ident identifying accommodations as well. And um, so the other stuff is pretty, pretty typical of what should be asked. Uh, but I uh, created this form as a way for you guys to kind of get all the information that you need from that very first meeting with them and then add to it later on. And then with their signature, um, it makes them feel like they're ready to move forward. And then also it's important to discuss what each responsibilities are. So you as a employment specialist will tell them, you know, what I do in each step and then what the client's responsibilities are too. So with those resources, we're going to move into a discussion, question and answer. Here's the handbook. Oh, a little bit about the handbook. So the Rehabilitation Research and Training Center on Employment for Individuals with Blindness or Other Visual Impairments. They published this human resource guide for working with employees experiencing vision loss in order to uh, provide useful information to HR staff and supervisors who are helping employees who experience vision loss maintain employment. The guide will be helpful for HR staff and supervisors who are unfamiliar with blindness or low vision. So this also went out to all the SBVI, the Service to the Blind and Visually Impaired counselors as well. So the counselors should be familiar with it. All right, so for the discussion, I have a guest speaker, and he is our employment specialist here at the Rehabilitation Center for the Blind, and his name is Ron Gertz, and he works and has worked for a very long time with individuals with vision loss, and so I have a few questions that I have received prior to us uh, starting today, so we will go over those questions, and in the meantime, if you have additional questions, Write them down and we'll be going, we'll be asking for them, or you can put them in the chat box. So the first question, as a as a counselor, I would always get, well, what type of jobs have you found people that are blind? And so my response would be, well, it depends on their skills and abilities. They can do almost any job that anybody with good vision can do, well, excluding having a driver's license and not being able to do any driving positions. But Ron, what type of jobs have you found people that are blind? Okay, um, I guess I found quite a few different ones. Um, Dishwashing has been one that a lot of people don't think that people with vision loss can do, but I've placed, well, three or four people doing that, and they have told me that they actually get the dishes cleaner than the people who can visually inspect them, mainly because they're feeling them with their fingers to make sure that they're clean. Um, customer service reps, a couple of people doing that, um, as long as the assistive tech will actually work with their systems. Um, 
You have a lady who's cashiering at a high gas. gas. Um, a nurse I was working with a little bit, um, just had some vision loss. So she was working at a um, rehabilitation center. Um, a young man uh, doing uh, grill work at Augustana. A um, couple of people doing receptionist work. Um, a couple assistant teachers at a daycare. Um, I have one that's a stalker at Menards, a uh, greeter at Walmart. Um, I had one, one guy who uh, did a lot of eBay stuff already, and we got him a job doing the e-commerce at Goodwill. So when people bring things in that are of value, he researches them, finds a price, and puts them on um, the Goodwill eBay site. Uh, customer service at, uh, used to be Midco Call Center, it's now called Five Star. We had somebody working out there just taking incoming calls. Um, those are the main ones that I could remember that I've done over the years that had vision loss. And they were all different degrees. Um, of those, I think there was only two that were blind, completely blind. So most of them were just other uh, different degrees of vision loss. All right, another question that I had is, how do you approach an employer and promote someone with a severe vision disability? Uh, this job placement provider has found the greater the vision disability, the more difficult it is to motivate an employer to take the chance and hire that person. So mainly what I do in I go in, tell them who I am, what I what I do, the kind of uh, clients I work with. Then I'll go to the specific job that they are applying for or did apply for. I'll talk to them about the skills that they have for that job um, after I okay it with the client first I always make sure that it's okay that you're going to tell them that they do have this disability I um, will tell them about after I get through with that I'll tell them about the incentives for hiring somebody with a disability you know the OJT employment skills um, the tax credit so I'll kind of go through all of these steps with them. Um, the final one might be talking about the assistive tech that they're gonna use. Um, I know a little bit about what programs it won't work with. The biggest one is anything that's IBM, the ASA 400 series. Um, if we can get past that, if it's web-based or Windows-based, then we have a very good shot at it'll work. Um, I tell them we have, or well, yeah, I tell them about what jobs, I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, then we I talk to them about Dakota Link, having somebody come in, check out their system, and just see if it will work or not. Um, I want to say about 50% of the time they'll agree to have somebody come in and look at it and just see if it'll work. Um, I tell them about job coaching, how, you know, I'm not just going to bring this person in and turn them loose. I'll come in and do um, some orientation training with them, um, you know, be there while they're teaching them what he needs to do. So I just tell them, you know, and I'll be there for whatever it takes to get him acclimated to the job. Yeah, and I was going to touch on just building a rapport with that employer first getting their trust and getting to know the business and their needs. And then if there's a need that you can identify that you have a solution to, that you may have a client in mind, then you could talk about how you've got a solution and you've got this individual that has the skills and has the abilities to do the job. And then you can educate that employer on different types of accommodations that that individual may need. And then, um, Always just remember it's people first, that disability etiquette. Um, just talk about the individual. Don't start the conversation talking about blindness because right away they're going to kind of freeze up and 
not listen to the rest of what you have to say. So just talk about that individual and their skills and then educate. I mean, not not too many employers know about vision loss. There are some that really do, but just educating them and say, you know, they just may need these accommodations. Vocational rehab is, is here to help. And so those accommodations could be very simple as changing lighting that may benefit the whole center or, or a whole place of employment or um, or the vocational rehab counselor has already purchased some different assistive technology for that client. And so it's not going to cost the employer anything. But it's the fear of the unknown that makes them not want to try something new. So just educating them and helping them understand what the different accommodations are and then then talking about the disability or saving that for the very last. But like Ron said, offering those incentives, if the employer is kind of hesitant that on the job training, you know, then it, it only costs the employer half the wages and um, job coaching is huge. So mm -hmm. having having a job coach working with that client instead of the, the hesitant employer will make a big difference. I think all the years I've been doing this, I've only had one or two that did the employment skills, mainly because of the wages that the state pays. The employer feels that the person, if they're going to be doing the job, he should be making the same as everybody else. So a lot of them will, will opt to go with the OJT instead. Awesome. A third question we were asked is, when looking through job leads, do you have any tips for how to review the jobs? Because, they, because many times the jobs will require a driver's license and then that person with vision impairment is una unable to obtain one. So how do you go through job leads? Um, well, when I find a, a job that I think somebody with vision loss can do, I will normally go to the company's website and research it there, research the company and um, the job description itself, because usually at their websites, they give a little more information than a job site. Um, a lot of them, you can use a driver. Um, I only know of a couple places where they absolutely will not hire anybody without a driver's license. And I don't understand why, because they don't have to drive, but it's just policy and they stick to it. Um, but I'd say the biggest thing, though, is just to do good research about the job, what the skills they need to have to do the job. I mean, that seems to work for me. And if you can go in and talk to them, the employer, and they know that you know a little bit about their company, I think that helps, too. And when, so do you prefer to go in and talk to the employer face-to-face, -face, or do you give them a call? Um, I do both. Um, I've started working with one of the rehab counselors for SVBI here in Sioux Falls, and we've been setting up appointments with HR people and going in and talking to them. Otherwise, um, I don't have any problem just cold call, go in and, and talk to them too. Sometimes I can get away with it. Sometimes I can't. I have to make an appointment and come back, but um, I do both, I guess. Great. Another, there, I think there are about two different strategies for, for talking to employers. And one strategy is having a client in mind and then trying to kind of sell that client to the employer. But another strategy is just meeting with that employer and getting to know their business and just, you know, kind of having the business sell themselves to you. And that way you're not trying to push a client on them or anything. You are just curious about their company, curious about their positions, uh, getting to know about all the different openings they may have in the future, and then letting them know like what you do as an employment specialist or a job placement provider. And that way when they have a job opening in the future, they'll contact you and and then you may have a client in mind then. So it's two different strategies where you go in with the client in mind or you just go in to get, know, to get to know that business better.
but I unmuted you guys if you wanted to ask us any questions. I have Sherry Van Leary uh, here and she is out of Madison and she's worked with some individuals with vision impairments. What would you say your strategies are, Sherry? Catch you off guard, make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> How about Matt and Chris? I know you guys have worked with some individuals that have vision impairments. Do you want to unmute yourself and and talk a little bit about your strategies? That'd be great. Are you still there? Yeah, hey Sherry, there you are. I was talking and nobody was seeing anything and I'm sitting here clicking all kinds of buttons to see what's wrong here. Um, I must have had my own muted or something. Yeah. Um, the What I was saying um, when you'd asked me that question is, Ron covered a lot of the approaches I use. You know, first of course you find out from the client what exactly they're interested in and of course what if they've had previous experience and then we look and see what may be available and for for uh, jobs and then I a lot of times I'll contact the employers and talk to them um, and just kind of discuss what the job entails and get into a little more information then with the client that I'm working with. And I've only worked with one that was totally blind and we were able to do some situationals but he really wanted to cook. Um, and we that job did not come available and what, what the situation I think was, he wanted to cook at a daycare and he, um, I think they were a little concerned because he had some um, issues with, uh, oh he had really flaky skin and I think they were concerned that maybe something would be not very sanitary but otherwise, I've had luck with most everyone that I've worked with with a visual impairment as long as they were motivated to work. But Ron covered a lot of what I, I guess uh, the approaches I use as well. Good. Hi Kelly, this is uh, Matt and Chris. Can you can you hear us now? Yes, we can. Sorry, I don't know what happened. We couldn't unmute and then everything froze and we had to rejoin. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. Chris Chris and I were just talking about it. So, um, a lot of the same strategies that Ron and Sherry have already reviewed, uh, you know, are, are I guess pretty much the fundamental strategies that we use here. Um, yeah, I won't speak for, yeah, I won't speak for Chris. Well, maybe I will a little bit. <laughs> um, situational assessments have been have been very helpful, um, particularly if, as we're trying to assess where people are at in, in regards to skill level. Uh, plus, it it's a nice way for the business to just kind of get to meet that person in person. Um, I think I think uh, 
Ron might have mentioned it earlier, you know, sometimes there's just that fundamental maybe hesitation or, or dare I say fear, level of fear. And if we can overcome that and, and uh, help people just build a connection, that seems to be effective. Um, Contacting the employer. Yeah, you will go, go ahead. I, um, on the majority of the ones that I've worked with so far, I've contacted the employer and, and uh, you know, talked about the, the client. And I never start, like you said, never start out with the fact that they have a visual impairment. But I always try to sell their skill level, what they, what they can bring to the table. Um, and I think that's been really successful on my end. I think every person that has come my way from SBVI has is employed, and some of them are still employed. So, um, I mean, we have people at 3M. Um, we, I'm trying to think. So we've had people at, let's see, Super 8 doing, what was that, accounting? Front desk. For, for a while that yep. just wasn't a good fit, unfortunately. It wasn't a good fit because there was just too much busy work to stay up, you know, to keep up with everything. But overall, I think it's been pretty successful. I think it's mainly just getting to know that person, getting to know uh, the different skills that they have, um, you know, and that, that, that there are jobs that they can do, not just taking any job, but finding a job that's the right fit for the employer and for the individual that we're working with, I think is really successful. Right. And sometimes if, if we do that situational assessment and we find out that that's a good fit and the employer is interested, you know, so, sometimes the, the disability or the impairment, I should say, won't, won't come up until later, until we encounter a situation. You know, if that person can go in there and do that job, um, then we're just going to let them do that. But if, if we're noticing areas that they're struggling in, um, then, of course, we're going to mention mention those components. So it's not that we're, we're certainly trying to hide that or not being open about it, but um, we don't want to create any kind of preconceived notion either about what people can or can't do. Um, so I think it's just best to let people demonstrate that and then kind of fill in the gaps um, in terms of support um, or otherwise. I don't know, does, does that help? Do you guys have any comments or? Well, I have another thing to add too, is that um, it's also been very helpful working with, with Jim from Dakota Link um, in getting you know the adaptive equipment people need to enable to do their jobs. That's been very, very helpful. And I, I've worked with Jim quite a bit and, and I think that's been a success as far as people being able to um, to do certain jobs in the community. Yeah, I think to build on that, I, I would agree with Chris. We we had um, a gentleman up at Project Search here a year or two ago, and and he came with some adaptive you know equipment. Um, Kelly, you had showed an example of that a session or two back. Uh, it almost looks like a cell phone, but it you know takes pictures. It's got the different contrasts and what whatnot on it. Um, I, I think one of the biggest barriers that we've encountered working with people rather than businesses is the reluctance to use that technology, um, even if they have it. So I don't know if you guys have encountered that as well, um, but we, we have seen that on occasion. So. Right, usually the younger population wants to fit in. And so even though they have those portable CCTVs or video magnifiers, they We'll try to hide it a little bit, even though they know that it's a benefit to them. But it seems like the older population is like, look at my cool gadget that I got. And they're a lot more open <laughs> to working with it. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Matt. But yeah, sometimes having a, a hidden disability is, is an impact to finding employment. But as Matt said, sometimes it can be a benefit where if they can do the job, without needing accommodations right away, you know, they could prove to the employer that they're just like anybody else. And then if their job duties change, then they may need accommodation at that time for their vision impairment. But yeah, there with like how we explained in session number two with all the the different eye diseases, it's going to vary so much on what a client needs with the with a vision impairment. And so there's going to be clients that just need a little bit of assistance because their vision impairment is not significant. But then you, there will be times where you come across somebody that is totally blind. Uh, it's not, not that common, but there are some individuals out there. Um, so Ron, what has been some of your experience when work, with working with somebody that's been totally blind? Um. 
like you said, they are probably the tougher because everybody feels they can't do anything. Um, and that's where I think going in, talking to the employer before, letting them know about the assistive tech, you know, how it works and what it can do helps to get um, somebody in. Plus the fact that the state will help pay for it or they'll pay for all of it, you know, if need be. Um, and every now and then you'll run into that one HR person or uh, owner of a company that's just more than willing to give somebody a chance. Um, I had that happen just not too long ago. I had a young man I'd been working with for quite a while, yeah, totally blind. Three years, I think. Yeah. Um, well, he'd gone through three different um, employment specialists working with him. And we finally came across a guy that said, hey, if he can do the job, you know, with the assistive technology, let's bring him in. Let's see if it'll work, you know. And he has bent over backwards to make sure that it works for my client. Um, and it's, you know, it's just great. It makes you feel good that there are people out there willing to do that. Um, my client had a lot of the assistive tech already, so we just had to go in and uh, hook it up. Um, he modified the job just a little bit, um, and he's gonna teach him more very slowly, teach him so he can do the whole job, which he can, but he just didn't wanna throw him into overload right away, so. But like I said, those, those employers are kind of few out there. Um, but knowing, knowing a little bit more about the technology and how it works, I think really helps when you go in and talk to an employer. Um, like I said, I did some research over the years too about what works with JAWS and what doesn't. Um, and most companies, if they're a big company, they're gonna use the IBM. Um, it's like an access, I guess, program for inventory for their products and their employees, um, which JAWS just refuses to work with. Um, and IBM actually tried to create their own version of JAWS so that it would work with it, and they kind of gave up from what I read, so. But um, I just wanted to say that when since we've started going in and talking to people ahead of time, uh, the HR people, um, most of them will say, you know, okay, if you have somebody that's going to apply, give me a call, you know, and then I will make sure they get in for an interview. And I think it's kind of because they know now that we're not going to send them anybody that's not qualified for the job, which has been, but it's been helping me because I've at least been getting people interviews and I can find out how their interview skills are too. So if maybe that's why they're not getting jobs because they don't interview very well, or if they just don't have the right skills. So they need to have a couple mock interviews then with you? Yeah, if they if they tell me right away when I meet with them that they don't interview very well, then I have them come in and we go over interview questions and tell them how to do it, which is part of um, vocational resources we do that um, twice a week here. When people come through the program, we go over interview questions. So they, when they leave here, they know how to answer them or they're very familiar with them so they're a little more comfortable with them. Do you wanna tell us how you came across an employer for that client that is totally blind? Um, do you remember how? Department of Labor. Yeah, <laughs> just going through their website. Right, yeah. Um, we filled out the, well, it was, it was an online application through Department of Labor. And at the end, it said to stop in any time between two and four, something like that. So we stopped in and um, talked to the hiring person. And he said, yeah, I had gotten them and I had planned on calling you for an interview. So we had brought in um, my client's resume 
and he had a couple of letters of reference to from past uh, employers and we gave those to him and he said you know this looks really good let's let's give it a shot so it took us i don't know a little over a week i guess week and a half before we could get all the assistive tech here and ready to go but then he just jumped right in and uh my client just kind of amazed him how fast he was he was doing customer service phone calls how many he was going through in a day so but he did have a little experience doing it too so that helped and with the WIOA uh, changes a couple years ago uh, Department of Labor and vocational rehab uh, and for vocational rehab, you have rehab services and service to the blind and visually impaired, the two different counselors from the different divisions. They all work together as a team. There's the integrated resource teams. And so that those teams with Department of Labor, with the VR counselor, with the employment specialist, uh, with anybody else, maybe long-term services and support or, um, or a school district or something, usually that client is just not by themselves. And so now it seems like we've done more of a team approach. And so sometimes reminding yourself that you're not alone with working with this client, that there there's a team with that client. And um, sometimes that VR counselor needs to just put that team together. And then you guys can put your heads together and get maybe more information and, and better ideas of how to work with that client to get the end result of employment. I actually have one client who is not visually impaired that we are doing that with Department of Labor. And we meet once a month to discuss what's been done, you know, the interviews she's had and stuff like that. And it is, it is a big help because everybody then is on the same page, so. Yeah. Have we sparked any more questions from any of you? If you're able to find your mute button, which is one of the four buttons on the bottom of the screen um, from left to right, there's a video button, a, a microphone, which would be your mute, and then a sharing, and the red button is to end the call. But I do have a question for you guys. Uh, do you have any fears or what would you say your biggest fear is with working with someone who has a vision impairment? Why you can type it into the, the chat box. Terry, I see that you are unmuted. Did you? Oh, and you, you typed in the chat box. Okay. It looks like. Yeah. I, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So go ahead. Oh, sweet. Okay. So I had a couple of questions. I One of them was I wanted to find out what all of your incentives were. Um, and then the second one was um, I worked with students. So I did the project skills um, and I had a student that was almost totally blind, but having these questions is so valuable, you know, to try and figure out where they're able to see if they are and how they receive that lighting and all that stuff. So I appreciate that so much. But um, working with the student, it was, um, I was trying to help push him to do as much on his own as he could, um, getting in and out of the building. Um, he was also working with another um, visually impaired um, provider with training in his um, just day-to-day -day, um, 
life, you know, getting around and stuff in the school district and all that and learning Braille and, and stuff. But I, again, you know, hearing, you know, you guys finding all these jobs, I'm like, again, not having any training prior to that with visually impaired made it difficult. But uh, we got him a job. It was at um, uh, the visitor center of like the city building. Yep. People would come in the door and he would then um, try and direct them where they needed to go. If they had any questions about meetings or anything like that, he would hear a spill. And he also worked side by side with another person who had been there um, many years as and he also was visually impaired, so he didn't put up with any babying. <laughs> you know, he just right. told, it, told it the way it was. You know, this is what you need to do. And and uh, but it was still very difficult. You know, again, there, he's a student, not an adult, with all these experiences and stuff. And um, yeah, just trying to find those right positions. You know, like I said, he was almost nearly totally blind. Um, Right. But the question is, is, you know, finding, you know, situationals, we didn't, we didn't have situationals for the students and um, just with project skills, the business doesn't have to pay, you know, that's paid through a co-op between the voc rehab and the school district. So um, the, the wages weren't important but um yeah just finding those spots you know and wanting to give them the best experience that they can have you know yeah it is it is getting tougher too to find situationals because everybody's afraid of liability but when we go in and we talk to the hr people we bring that up that's one of the things you know would you be willing to have Somebody come in, you know, try the job, and sometimes they'll say, you know, yeah, we can let them try it, or otherwise they'll say, you know, there's confidentiality, but they could come in and watch and ask questions. So, I mean, at least that's a start, and it gets them in so they can kind of check out the job a little bit. With the project skills, that's they kind of consider it as a long-term um, situational, right? You know, um, but just finding positions for that individual to um, exceed and be productive. I, he struggled with every everything. I mean, he wasn't able to hardly um, read anything. He didn't know his braille. He didn't know. Um, anything he, um, and he was at when I worked with him he, I think he had he was 20 or because it ends at 21 um, project skills does and then they go into the voc rehab as an adult um, but I just I just felt a little helpless in being able to help him you know um, and that's why I, I took this course with you guys you know going through this is because I don't want to be in that spot again I want to be able to like you said look through their eyes and then see what they see and and try to assist we I worked with another individual that was visually impaired and we had the uh, Dakota link help us with accommodations with the screen and the, the keyboard and things like that, you know, the colored keyboard with the bigger numbers and letters and stuff. But this wasn't the case with this individual. And so it was, you know, again, just trying to find ways to assist and help. Yeah, it does make it a lot tougher when they don't have the skills they really need. That's for sure. I know I've run into that too, where you know, they're visually impaired. They can only stand for a little while. And um, now I have one who has those, plus um, there's a language barrier there a little bit. Understands English, just doesn't speak it real well. 
So you, you get all those together, it does make it a lot tougher to, to do a situational or even a job too. Which case, so what that's, are you... that's where you're looking for that person that's going to say, okay, let's give him a try. Yeah, we can work with this, you know. So if he's a hard worker, we'll give him a shot. So I'm having that rapport with the employer. And also, it was mentioned that Voc Rehab does have a document uh, regarding insurance coverage for a client mm -hmm. if they have an accident while they're doing a situational assessment. So, yes, Voc Rehab does cover. Uh, the client during situational assessments. They do it for project skills as well. Right. Yep. Well, what are the the incentives that you 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 were kind of whipping through that a little bit? Can you go into those again? You know, as far as uh, business hiring an individual. Um. Well, I feel because Watsi was one of them. Yep. Okay. You. That was on yours. Yeah, work opportunity tax, tax credit. credit. Which that one, I, if I remember right, is based on how many hours and their wages yep. as to how much of a tax credit they get. And it's only up to a certain amount that they can do. Um, you know, and most of the larger corporations know about that and they use it. It's part of their paperwork when they hire somebody. Right. So I don't. Bring that one up a lot and let you know it's a smaller company and, and they don't know about it yeah. um you know the on the job training i tell them about that how the state will pay half of their wages while they're learning the job and i tell them you know it's kind of based on how many hours they're going to work a week and how hard the job is to learn you know and then i'll get together with them and with the counselor and we'll try and figure out you know, a good number that's happy, keeps everybody happy. So um, then the, like the employment skills, I said, that's the one I probably doesn't get used very much because the state only pays minimum wage. Yeah, it's similar to project skills before adults. Yeah. So the job coaching is a very common incentive yeah. where where you as an employment specialist or another job coach comes in instead of the employer having to take the time to do training. Ron and Kelly, this is Mike in Aberdeen. Um, Ron, Ron, you mentioned sometimes they can utilize a driver. Have, have you found an employer other than the state that will provide a driver? And then secondly, you know, in, in regards to incentives, Kelly, for the um, job placement providers over there, can you just remind them what um, incentives the individuals have for employment as far as being legally blind and on Social Security? How much they can earn? Oh, how much they can earn. I don't have the statistics right up in front right now. Um, I know if somebody has the prime as their primary disability that's, that they um, claim to receive SSDI, Social Security Disability Insurance. There is a higher rate for those individuals. I think last time I looked, it was somewhere around 1,800 a month that an individual that is blind can make up to that and not lose their benefits where uh, somebody that has a different disability as primary, I think they're around $1,000 a month. Yeah. Is that what you're wondering, Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that the providers were that were participating were aware of that difference. And then, oh, yeah. again, you know, Ron, you mentioned drivers for clients. Have you found any employers other um, than the state that will provide a driver? Not that will provide, but they'll let you hire your own driver, I guess. You know, you pay them. Um, the only one that I know that even comes close is... Um, out at Eros where they have the, if you want to call it a bus service or a shuttle. Um, but even then, yeah, they do pay for that, I do believe. But out there, it's normally full. You don't get on unless somebody quits or dies. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. She said that 
the rate now for SSDI for those individuals that have uh, blindness or vision impairment is $2,040 that they can make in a monthly earning without losing their benefits. And there, I mean, there's a lot to learn about uh, Social Security benefits, um, SSI and SSDI. So if you have the chance to go through a training, that would be excellent because there are different things that they can subtract from their income or different ways um, that they can still receive their benefits even if they go over that amount. Uh, a client that is going through voc rehab that is on benefits is usually always connected with a benefit specialist as well. But just to be familiar with those things, it'd be good to go through a training if you have the opportunity. Yep, and in Sioux Falls, the Sioux Falls area, we have Rhonda Erickson out of the district office. And then, Terry, there's a link to the Work Opportunity Tax Credit in the chat box uh, for the uh, the WOTC, and I think it's up to 2,400 per year that they that an employer can get back on taxes with that tax credit. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Here, Matt. Thank you. I, I have I have gone through some of those trainings and uh, um, I wasn't sure at this point what if if it went up or not. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it goes up just a little bit every year. The cost mm -hmm. of living rate usually. But yeah, some other fears like finding ways to get them to and from work, um, especially when you live in the rural areas or the client lives in the rural areas. That's always always the number one issue that they're having um, sometimes they can do business at home uh, and that's that's you know the dream job is to work from home but that's not always available and um, just finding a neighbor finding a co-worker finding a family member or or finding a paid driver uh, just trying to go over that barrier can be a difficult one the transportation is probably the biggest barrier with people with vision impairments and then another fear was unintentionally offending the individual. Uh, usually they don't, they don't take offense. They, they might just laugh at you. Uh, we, if we make a mistake and we usually do, like, I mean, even with my blind or visually impaired coworkers, I'll be like, Hey, did you see that? And they're like, no, of course they didn't. <laughs> or, or like, I'll walk behind them and they'll be like, uh, I was, following you because I don't have a clue where I'm going and I can see your shirt and uh, I would rather you lead the way. So usually they correct me if if I do something that is not helpful for them. Um, and, and even just asking them if there's certain things that they prefer not to be called or mentioned, um, just asking them right up front. They typically are open, but otherwise they they want you to talk to them as you would talk to anybody else you know say hey did you see the news last night even though they might not see it they hear it but they still want you to talk to them like they are a person with sight and, and a lot of times i mean you're working with people who haven't been blind their whole life or very slowly i mean and so they're used to talking that way too so it's just kind of natural to just keep doing it right and so yeah just the inexperience um you know vision loss is not as common as some of the other disabilities but just staying up to date on trainings and and maybe if you've got a family member or a friend that has a vision impairment and just just asking them more questions, getting to know it, becoming more familiar with it. Uh, you can come to the the rehab center here and tour and get some more knowledge. And um, which leads me to a final question: Is you know what would you like to know more about to better prepare you to work with somebody with a vision impairment? So we're we're almost done. I just I had that question to see if. You know, if there's a training that that you guys want more specific information on. 
So as you ponder that question, uh, what else would you like to know to better prepare you to work with somebody with vision impairment? A uh, four-year certificate with a or a certificate of attendance. Uh, will you email me one thing that you appreciated about this whole training and one thing that you would change? And then once I get that email from you, I will respond with your certificate of attendance. But it is 9.30. I just had today's session as one hour, uh, just as a good discussion and provide you with some resources. So if there's any last thoughts about ideas that uh, you would like to know about preparing you for the future, working with individuals with vision impairments, go ahead and say it now or we can call it a day. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Again, um, we are here as a training center, the South Dakota Rehabilitation Center for the Blind. We have lots of individuals here with different knowledge bases that would be a great resource if you have any questions. Uh, I provided the, my address, phone number, and email. And don't hesitate to call. We're always here to help. Thank you. Thank you for joining.